Hello everyone. I am on a couple minutes early just to give people, or one minute early just to give people time to get on. Today we're gonna to be talking about self-limiting beliefs. So I just wanna give people time to hop on. This is a huge topic that plagues a lot of people. For those of you that are watching the replay, you know, while we wait for people to get on, one thing that I do think that I want to come on and talk about or do some sort of post, I'm not sure, because um, tomorrow's my dad's birthday. Hey, Life Forever Unscripted, we're going to be talking about limiting beliefs today, self-limiting beliefs that keep you stuck in negative patterns. Hey, Kekamo, um, if you want to talk about limiting beliefs that keep you stuck in negative patterns, then you want to stay on this live. I'm going to be starting in exactly one minute. We start at seven o'clock. Um, in the meantime, I was mentioning that there is a full moon tomorrow and the full moon is phenomenal. So if you don't know how to manifest with the moon, one thing that you may want to do is in, um, if you go to yashikas.com forward slash links and scroll down to manifesting with the moon, I have a whole class that teaches you how to manifest with the new moon and the full moon if you want to do that. But I like to be respectful of time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are talking today about self-limiting beliefs. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Yashika. I am the founder of Yashika's Intuition, and I created Yashika's Intuition because I was tired of people not having all the information at their disposal, both spiritual information and and scientific information to really live life more consciously and more empowered and so I give you this information with the hopes that you will learn how to step into your purpose connect to your true self and then move from that space and create goals and all the things that you want in life because you have everything at your disposal that you're using and you're doing it with more passion and more purpose but one of the things that people don't understand is that if you want to create a foundation that is going to last, you need to learn how to build your foundation before you can start to do some of the other things that you may want to implement. A lot of people that I see trying to better their lives like to get all the information, all the tools, read the books, the YouTubes, listen to people like me and gain all this knowledge and all these processes, but you haven't taken a step back to understand that the reason why some of the things that you're grasping at are not working for you is because you are missing the most important piece of the foundation in order to create lasting change and meaningful change. And that is working on your mindset. If you do not work on your mindset, what you will find is that no matter what it is that you try to do in life, you're not going to realize the full potential of what it is that you could if you did the work on your mindset. And I'll give you an example. You can see two people from the same household, or you could see two people taking the same class with access to the same information, but they could fear off in completely different paths. And a lot of that is due to mindset and mindset creates this cascade of other things that I'll talk about in this short little teaching today to help you understand that if you don't bring it back to mindset in all that you do, if you wanna have wealth, if you wanna have a good career, if you wanna have a good family, um, good family relationships, good loving relationships, it all comes back to the way that you perceive things and the way that you show up and so when we talk about limiting um, beliefs I have my notes right here so when we talk about limiting beliefs they're usually these assumptions or perceptions that you have picked up along the way from various instances like for some of us you know it comes from the way that we grew up it comes from society we learn from our tra tragic and traumatic experiences we learn from good experiences so all these things couple together and they create these assumptions and perceptions of the way that we see ourselves and also the way that we see the world and if you are one that is holding on to a lot of self-limiting beliefs then what you are doing is holding on to assumptions and perceptions and attitudes that limit your ability to have all that it all that there is for you and available for you in this world so you're missing out on your true potential by not um developing more positive uh, beliefs and mindsets and assumptions about things 
So I'm gonna give you some examples of what that could look like because in all of our lives is gonna be a little bit different. And a lot of the times people don't see that they have a mindset issue. They think that, well, I'm just disorganized or I just keep falling into these crappy relationships. When at the end of the day, you need to understand the power of your thoughts and how your thoughts create and shape a lot of what happens to you based on the assumption and the perceptions that you developed based on those thoughts, the attitude that you show up with in the world. So usually when you have self-limiting beliefs, you are limiting your life based on your current circumstances. So if that's you, what it is is that you cannot creatively see or problem solve your way out of your current situation and you look at things in your life based on what you see now, not understanding truly that what you see now is not based on information and it's not the only possibility that's available to you. It's not based on what's happening now. Nine times out of 10, especially in the more impactful things in your life, the things that you are experiencing now are a result of some decisions and circumstances that happened before today. So you have to understand how life works, how decision-making works, how materialization of your decisions and your choices and circumstances play out because the present is usually just showing you a mirror into what happened in the past, your mindset in the past and what you developed. And so in this current moment, you have a choice every day to look beyond what you see right now. You can look at the world in a different way. You can open up your perception. You can open up your assumptions and you can open up your beliefs and your attitude and move very differently if you can learn to look at the world not based on your current circumstances but on probability possibilities. Um, even if you don't believe them, there are other possibilities other than the one that you are experiencing right now. And so you need to be able to look at life a little bit more differently from different angles, change your perceptions. For some of you, these self-limiting beliefs are going to look like you getting stuck in the same thing over and over. And a lot of times I know I have been there. Like you are like, why do I keep attracting the same type of person? Um, why is my relationship always crappy? Why does it seem that no matter what job I do, I'm experiencing the same issues and problems and struggles? Well, one of the reasons why you keep staying stuck in the same thing over and over again is partly because of the way that you think. And a lot of people don't like to hear that because if there's something particularly traumatic, it can sound like, we are putting the blame back on the person that's experiencing the trauma, we're gonna step outside of that. We're just gonna talk about how if you only have this amount of education and you are only able to see past the things that are see within the things that you were taught in society or taught in your household or taught through the education system or taught in your limited experiences of the world, then you're missing out on a lot of information that is available to you to allow you to not be, um, stuck in the same thing over and over again but because and i'll talk about this later we oftentimes don't move out of what we currently know and stretch ourselves and and look at the world from a perspective of somebody that already has what we want we end up repeating the same thing over and over the same relationships the same cycles the same money struggles all of the things and if that is you, if this is how your limiting beliefs play out, then you need to understand that part of it is your inability to be able to creative problem solve or tap into the resources that you need to be able to move beyond that because they are there. And I'll talk to you about those in a second. Um, another thing, you limit your choices because of what you've been taught. So again, that is creating these limiting beliefs, these attitudes, these perceptions, but instead it's a little bit different. So maybe you've been taught that um, you have to get married and you have to stay with the same partner even if they treat you like crap, or you have to stay with the same partner because that's what married people do, even though in your relationship you feel unfulfilled, you feel like you're misunderstood, you're not receiving the love that you want, even if you have given it an earnest try to try to create a, a loving relationship, 
relationship or even financially. Maybe you're limiting your choices because, um, for instance, a lot of people think that once you want to move into a certain subset of income that you're now leaving behind other people um, that don't make that income or you think you're better than them. or And so you are in this little um, half in, half out where you, you may want to move forward, but because you've been taught by other people what you should do, what people our age should do, what life should look like for people in a certain um, subset of society, you fall victim them to that and that limits your ability to move forward um, here's another one and this one is really helpful for you to pay attention to because it can play out in your life in two different ways so I want to make sure that I discuss both ways so you understand if one of these impacts you and the reason why I'm going over these things is because you have to understand where you are in order to even start to begin to shift to where it is that you want to be in corporate they would call that a gap analysis what's currently going on versus where do you currently or where do you want to be in the future so what is that distance and how can you close the distance between the two the current outcome versus the desired outcome so Another way that these limiting beliefs will play out in your life is that you'll think the same and you will act the same day after day, rarely applying any sort of real creative thinking to try to make things different. This is important. This is huge. And even though I do the type of work that I do with my clients, this was something that I just understood recently because I'm a very rational, logical type A, let's get it done, let's heart charge type of person, very masculine energy. So for me, my solution to everything is, well, if it's not working, I'm going to try harder. I'm going to do better. And that's not always the issue. So you have to look at these certain long standing things in your life that don't look the way that you want them to. For instance, do, does your relationship look the way you want it? Does your career do your finances? And if they don't, and you feel genuinely like you've been trying harder to make things work, and at the same time working on yourself and your mindset, guess what? If it's not working and you keep trying harder, what do you think is going to happen? If you keep trying the same thing and it's not working and you just try it harder, that doesn't mean it's going to be more successful. That just means that you're going to get burnt out, overwhelmed, frustrated because you're going, to, you're going to keep doing the same thing over and over and not realizing the results. And a lot of people have a hard time stepping out of that and moving into a space where you're actually learning to creative problem solve, which means that maybe if you typically worked harder or if you typically responded in this way, or you typically wanted to solve the problem in this fashion, or you wanted to make your money better by setting up a budget or time management to be more organized, or you try to change your relationships, none of those may not work if you try harder. What you may need to do is learn how to think. And a lot of people do not know how to think. If you learn how to appropriately think about the things that are going on in your life, you're going to start to become more creative. And so where you may approach a problem is not that it's not working and I need to try harder. Maybe it's working and I need to try something different. I need to try something I've never tried before. I need to learn a new skill. I need to do something outside of my comfort zone. So that is one way that this kind of autopilot can just keep going and swallow you up in life. And you just look back month after month, year after year, and you wonder why you're not getting anywhere or you wonder why you're not getting as far as you wish that you could. But another way that this plays out, and this is the way I see it most often in the people that I work with privately, my clients, is that people don't think you think you're thinking but you're not you're making these automated or emotional decisions not truly knowing how what it is to just stop and be more aware and think and so again it plays out kind of the same way you just keep doing the same thing over and over again in the same autopilot mode over and over again. In fact, when I was setting up the personal mastery membership and doing a lot of research behind the way that people think about 
90 some percent of the thoughts that you have are similar to the thoughts you had the day before and the day before and the day before and the day before. So if you understand what I'm telling you about how powerful your thoughts are and you just keep having the same thoughts every day, not trying to be self-aware, not trying to learn how to control your thoughts, not trying to learn how to use your mind as a tool, it's no wonder that you're not going to get the results that you want no matter how bad you want them. You have to get off this autopilot loop. So 90 some percent of the thoughts are the same thoughts you have every day, right? That was part of the research I did for the membership. The second part though, was that the negative thoughts, which in within those 90% of the thoughts are always the same, or no, that wasn't it. Like the majority of those 90% of the same thoughts are negative for most people. So you may think that because again, it's starting to become a belief or a thought, which becomes a belief in that cascade that I'll tell you about that this is just the way it is. This is your mindset. You, you don't even bother the, to think because you think you're thinking when in reality, what this will have become for you is this autopilot way of life. And if you start to think the same thoughts every day, like I said, when I researched the membership at 90% of the thoughts you have every day are the same thoughts. And the majority of those thoughts are not geared in a positive and optimistic direction. Then guess what happens? these thoughts start to become habits and the way that they become habits is because your body wants to conserve energy and it wants to expend the least amount of energy possible and so if you start having these same thoughts over and over again your neural pathways and your chemical responses start to become efficient they start to form permanent pathways in your brain in your body to make that type of a process more efficient which means that you have now hardwired yourself to be the same person that you were yesterday and the day before and the day before so if you aren't getting re the results that you want in life right now you have to stop and you have to examine and you have to be more aware and you have to understand the power of thoughts in creating your ability to transcend limiting beliefs. No book is going to teach you that if you're not going to understand and do the work around the awareness. Um, no YouTube video, even me telling you this is not going to transform your life if you don't learn how to take control of this thought process and get it off of autopilot. So, um, I have a couple of questions for you. If you guys have a pen and paper, you may want to write the, these two down and just kind of think about them a little bit. Um, and it's on the subject of being on autopilot. And so one of the questions I wrote down is that if you aren't getting the results that you want in life right now, does it really benefit you to keep living this way? If you are not getting the results that you want in life right now, does it benefit you to continue living this way? And for some of you, you know, you may have a clear no, but some other difficult things may come up. But for some of you, you may say, well, yeah, you know, it does benefit me this way because this is, I need benefits or I need this or I need that. And I want you to then go back and circle back because that's a limiting belief. There is always a creative solution to wherever it is that you are. You just have to be able to find that solution. And with all the information that we have available, it's easy to find people that have done what you, um, what you have want to do or have gone through something similar to you and see how they made it out the other side. And I bet you it's because they think and approach and look at life differently than you do. So again, that's where that creativity is coming into play. This. All right. I think we're back. <laughs> All right. So the second question is, do you benefit by continuing to keep the same habits over and over? And be honest with yourself because for some of us, this is where I was. Yeah, I benefited from that limiting belief that no matter how your partner treated you, you're supposed to be in it, ride or die, because that's what people do, especially when they're married. Um, if you 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 feel like you benefit from that, right? Maybe it's a financial benefit, maybe it's a 
um, benefit where it's much deeper than that. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to be lonely. You don't have to deal with your feelings of abandonment or maybe because society said that you have more value and worth when you're with a person, maybe you get that type of pleasure. Or when you ask yourself, do you benefit by continuing to keep the same habits over and over, meaning staying in a situation or a job or, or financial situation that you don't like and you think that you're benefiting when you look at it from various different perspectives, not based on your own current circumstances and the education that you have around it, but actually what is possible, um, statistically possible, you're gonna find that if something is not the way that you desire it to be, and you are still in that situation, um, it's usually because you're letting a limited belief get you stuck. And so, what I want you to understand right now too about these limiting beliefs is every day, every moment, every second, we have a decision to make, right? And we have a decision to make based on, um, it could be simple. Do we wanna eat an apple or a burger? Do we wanna move left or right? <laughs> do we wanna do respond to people this way or that way? So there's always these moments in life that are gonna define if you're going to move out of a situation, circumstance, relationship, mindset that you don't like and start to move in a direction that you desire. But the question or the problem that we often have is we think that these insidious little small decisions that we make moment to moment don't mean anything. And if you know anything about compounding effect or even compounding interest in finances, you know that the, these little incremental moves may not seem like they mean anything, but they all weave together the puzzle about, um, that shows you what you're experiencing now. So your choices in relationships and within that relationship, if you're going to continue to respond and react a certain way, if it's a less desirable relationship, are you going to stay or go in the relationship? Are you going to save money like you said, or, or it's on sale and on clearance, so I'm going to just go ahead and spend the $5. All these little things make a big difference. And a lot of times people feel like, and you may feel like the thing that is Oh, life for every. Can you guys um put some emojis or hearts if you can see me? Because I know it did pause, but now it says unpause. So I just want to make sure we're okay before I just keep spilling my guts. So can you let me know that you can see me? Can I, can you guys see me? Let me know. <laughs> I I'm feeling like. I'm seen, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just see where I was in my notes. So anyway, so the moment to moment decisions define you, and if you can't pull it together, number one, and start to really think about how impactful those small decisions are, then you're not gonna be able to understand how to shift out of a, a different mindset. Number one, when you um, make these smaller decisions, these are the ones that usually impact your life. It may feel like what's impacting your life is when everything falls apart and, and the shit hits the fan. But no, usually it is a little small incremental things along the way that we didn't nip in the bud that actually start to, uh, okay, goes in and out, but good for now. But it's usually these small incremental decisions that we make along the way, often dishonoring ourselves or often um, not dishonoring, often also people think they're compromising, but often sacrificing your values for a circumstance, relationship, situation, what have you, and then stuff blows up. So you need to really also understand the importance of the moment to moment decisions that you make. And also a lot of people do not know what they want. And I talked about this with my ladies in the personal mastery membership yesterday about how if we don't pull it together and really define what we want for our future. And it's not, I want love. I want food. I want shelter. I want to be rich because those are just wishes. 
what is it that you truly want? When you say love, what does that look like? When you say money or wealth, what does that look like? When you say you want to be secure, what does that look like? When you want to be healthy, what does that look like? A lot of people are being way too vague. And so again, you kind of experience this vagueness in life where you just feel like you're not getting where you want to be because you don't specifically know what you want. And so another thing you're going to have to learn to do is really pull it together and figure out exactly what it is that you want so that you can learn to take more action in that direction. And what you will find when it comes back to limiting beliefs and being stuck in these negative patterns that they cause is that if you can take direction because you have a little bit more clarity about specifically what it is that you want a lot of these experiences that you're having right now they start to fall away they start to fade away and then as you take one step forward the uh, opportunities open up and one step forward opportunities open up so it's kind of like a little pathway that you have to um, create for yourself with more clarity so it's up to you, it's up to you. You're gonna face several choices. When we get off this live, you're gonna have some choices to make. When you start your day off tomorrow, you're gonna have some choices to make. And so some of them are gonna be big, some of them are gonna be small. I wouldn't assign importance to any of them right now if you're not where you need to be. What I would start to think about is if I had a scale what every time i make a decision is it coming on the side are you putting a rock on the side of where you are making decisions to move in the direction that you want or are you moving in the direction that you don't and put rocks on this side and you're going to find that the small little decisions the beliefs the attitudes the perceptions that you have are either going to be for your future or not for the future that you want for yourself and it'll clearly show you where it is that you need to regroup and um and recalibrate a lot of my clients know that I have them keep a lot, I have them do a lot of reflection and a lot of journaling, not on how they feel, but do journaling on specifically how certain situations are impacted, their attitude, their beliefs, their thoughts, because that helps to bring more self-awareness to where it is that actually gets you caught up in these limiting beliefs and in these um, negative thought patterns that keep you stuck so that you can know specifically that when you see, are, am I putting rocks and my thoughts and my focus in something positive or something negative, something that's moving me in the direction or not, you'll know exactly where it is that you may need to do the work. That's how you get the clue to shift your mindset. You have to evaluate yourself through introspection and self-awareness. Let's see. Um, once you start to take control of your possibilities, you will learn how to create the momentum forward. And I already kind of talked about that a little bit, but once you understand how powerful your thoughts are and you're able to be reflective and introspective and you're able to start to see where you may not be living up to your potential and starting to look at life a little bit more creatively outside of the bubble that you live in or the bubble that you're, the people that you've been around live in and start to see that there are probabilities outside of what it is that you're experiencing you can start to take these little steps forward that will create momentum that's how you create momentum that's how you create motivation if you don't understand that that's probably another reason why you get hung up you have to understand how momentum and motivation works all right so the way that you do this is simple <laughs> it's very simple all of my clients, when they take my, um, when I do my private coaching, I have a, a VIP library of lessons that I made specifically for them. And they all say, I can't believe it's this simple. To be different, to change your life, to shift these mindsets, to get out of negative patterns is simple but it's not easy because it all comes back to your thoughts. You start off in life with thoughts. You have a thought about your money. You have a thought about how relationships should be. You have a thought about your job. You have a thought about everything. And some of the time, most of the time, you charge these thoughts with emotions. So maybe for one thing you feel angry or happy or sad or abandoned or depressed. And once you start to charge these different thoughts, 
based on a multitude of things, what people have taught you, what you've experienced, um, what society teaches you, then you start to ingrain these beliefs. And once these things become beliefs, they're harder to change without, again, that conscious reflection and self-awareness and introspection about the way that you think. However, you've now formed these beliefs that take a while to untangle. They take about, most people scientifically, they don't, if somebody tells you it takes 21 days to change a habit, that's BS, that's not real science. Typically when, Scientists have done studies on change, and it's not only changing, like creating new habits, but it's also changing and rewiring the brain so that those habits become easier for you to stick with to make the lasting changes. Those changes take, on average, three months for somebody that is totally committed and in it, no questions asked, to about six months which is why when I work with my clients, I, I work with them only for a minimum of three months. I'm, you, you're setting yourself up for failure if you're not even gonna base your change and commit to a change between the three to six months, because that's when you'll see the results. So anyway, you form these beliefs. <laughs> and once you have these beliefs, they're a little bit harder to get rid of. And so then from those beliefs, that is how you act in the world. If you believe that people have ill intentions towards you, then when you go out in the world, you're gonna feel unsafe, you're gonna feel guarded, you're gonna feel vulnerable. If you believe that you're never gonna get wealthy, then you're gonna react in the world a very different way than somebody that has a different money mindset. The same with relationships. If you've had these hurtful or impactful things happen to you and you're not able to shift the way that you think so that you can be responsible, okay, I may have had this happen, but in the future, I don't want this to happen anymore and you can't change your thoughts, then you're gonna approach your relationships totally different than somebody that's able to really keep an eye on their mindset and approach their relationships with a different attitude. And so because you are going to be acting in your world very different than maybe I act in my world, our outcomes are going to be different. And then from those outcomes, those outcomes give you feedback, right? Because maybe you have this little cascade going in your life and you don't like the relationships that you're in or the career or your money's not right or your relationship's not right or you just don't feel happy in the world. You don't know yourself versus in my cascade because I'm doing the work on my thoughts on the foundation then I show up differently in life. So I can see probabilities, I can move in the world. When I have challenges, I'm able to bounce back from them a lot easier and cope better. Um, my relationships are healthier, all because I've chosen to approach life from a very different perspective based on the way that I think. This goes further. So we experience different outcomes, which give us different feedback. The feedback that you receive is in how happy you are in these various areas of your life. And if you're not happy in the various areas of your life, the first thing that you could do that is within your control to change these things is to go back to your thoughts. So it becomes a, a cycle and it can be a positive cycle, meaning you get positive feedback because you're doing the work, your relationships are getting better, you're starting to attract wealth and manifest the things that you want, and so you continue to see this positive feedback, so you keep doing the same thing, working on your thinking, working on your spirituality, all of these things, or you get this negative feedback. Now, when you get the negative feedback though, if you're not happy in certain areas of your life, what are you doing? If you're continuing to approach these feedbacks that you're getting in your relationships and your job and your finances and you're trying to approach it with the same way that you approached it before and got the negative feedback then therein lies part of the problem you have to change something and if we go in order in that little circle what comes after feedback we go back to thoughts your thoughts plus emotions create beliefs and your beliefs are how you act in the world and your attitude towards the world. And that then creates these outcomes. These outcomes give you feedback. The feedback is either gonna be positive or negative, And then you go back to thoughts and you keep doing that. So you have to look at that cycle. So that is um, what I will leave you with for this. So I know there is a bit of a delay. So I'm gonna just give you one little blurb and while I'm doing that, if you guys have any questions specifically about limiting beliefs, 
about help trying to get out of negative patterns or you want to ask me a question because you maybe feel a little bit stuck and you just want the help of a coach to try to you know give you a little bit of advice this is a time now where you could type that in the um, comment box and i will answer any questions or concerns that you have um but there's going to be a subset of you and i'm telling you all this that this is it if you do this i promise you your life will be on point this is all you need to know about anything in life as far as setting a solid foundation around your mindset and around getting unstuck from limiting beliefs but for some of you you have an issue because maybe you don't even know who you are or you don't know what you want and for some of you you may know like where you want to go but you struggle to get there on your own especially because like i said once you start to hit these beliefs um, people call them paradigms then it takes a lot of effort and a lot of consistency and a lot of commitment to be able to change that and a lot of people have not had to do something that difficult in their lives and so they struggle a little bit and so if this is you and you have trouble holding yourself accountable or finding clarity about the direction in life that you want to go or anything um, like that in life then i have private coaching available <laughs> nicole ashley nicole i have some slots available for private coaching that is specifically when you know you need to move from trying to do things on your own and start to move into trying to get help the main reason that you can see that is because maybe like i said if you're in this limited circle and you've been trying the same things really hard and you don't have perspective or information or even the ability or discipline to hold yourself accountable to something different then you probably need to work with somebody and i promise you like i work i've worked with coaches ever since i started my transformation decades ago and i will never stop because it's something that just helped me stay calibrated stay focused and really define define myself and have clarity and move forward um and, and not waste time and anytime i've ever done it the investment has always paid for itself so for some of you 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 just need help <laughs> and so if you want to learn more about private coaching then i can talk to you more about how i can help you connect to yourself authentically and learn how to make these better decisions that we were talking about these decisions based on your values and who it is that you want to be and where you want to go because we actually work on even helping you understand how to create that type of stuff for yourself and help you develop new patterns based on science also learn spiritual tools so you can back that up with some things that can help you tangibly along the way and open you up to more possibilities then you need to consider private coaching the link is in my bio or you could just go it's a free consult so you're not signing up for coaching to do this you're just signing up to see if you're a good fit um you could go to yashikasintuition.com forward slash coaching in order to learn more about that so does anybody have any questions I'm going to put the website while I'm looking. All I see right now is that Ashley said that's her. Um, and, you know, I'm going to be realistic because for even though I'm saying I know wholeheartedly that when you invest in coaching, if you can trust, have faith in the process, you will get an invaluable lesson if you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing and is certified. <laughs> um, you're going to get all that back. However, I do understand that in this realistic world that it can be a bit of an investment for some people to invest in coaching. So the next best option for you all would be to join the personal mastery membership and that's a monthly membership where you get these new lessons every month i go live in there quite a bit so you can have touch points and i can still help answer some of your questions but you also just get the modules that you need to learn these skills to understand how to think more creatively see outside of your possible your possibilities that you think that you have and learn that there's more probabilities in life than you can ever dream of and learn how to manifest and learn how to set goals and push the reset button and all of that the membership is going to be your um maybe your first touch point it is still self-coaching though so if you are struggling with doing things on your own even if you have all of the information then at some point 
you're going to have to invest in um, probably getting help, pr uh, private help, because that's where people can actually look at what you're going through and help support you in your personal endeavors. Um, all right. So I'm going to let you guys go. I put the link for um, signing up for the free console and I also have the link in my bio always feel free to DM me if you watch the replay and you have questions don't be afraid to ask I always respond to almost everything every question that I get all right talk to you later